everyone. Welcome to Testimony Thursday. You guys are getting a regular video today because I am going to be visiting my grandmother during the live time. And it was brought to my attention everything that has gone on during the Olympics in Paris. And we're going to be taking a break from our anxiety series this week to take a look at what has gone on and then we will get back hopefully next week to our anxiety stuff let's open in prayer lord jesus we just thank you for each one that's here and we just ask that you would show us clearly what this deal is with the olympics as we go through this study and we just thank you so much for all of your wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I did not see the Olympics. And if I had been watching the Olympics, I would have shut the television off because I absolutely refuse to watch anything like that. If I was at the Olympics, I would have left regardless. It just that is the way I am. I don't want to see that stuff. And I guess they have removed the footage, but even if it had been up, I would not have wanted to watch it even for this video. But I have poked around enough to get enough information to do the video, but don't go looking for this if you missed it. Uh, this whole situation reminds me of when Jacob was a little kid, I was always very careful about what he watched on TV. And a lot of family members, not within my household, but outside family members and friends could not understand why, like, certain cartoons and things we didn't let him watch. And they would say things like, oh, give me a break. It's only a cartoon. And it's the same thing with the Olympics. It's only the Olympics. This is how people's minds work. Satan can be in anything. He can be in anything affecting people's thoughts. And as we go into this, you'll see how this really, really could affect like kids' thoughts. Um, we have to be careful about not being naive about the things of the world, whether it's a cartoon or the Olympics or whatever we have to be on guard let's read 2nd Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5 2nd Timothy chapter 3 Verses 1 through 5, it's titled, The Dangers of the Last Days. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving they will slander others and have no self-control they will be cruel and hate what is good they will betray their friends be reckless be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God they will act religious but they will reject the power that could make them godly stay away from people like that so the Olympics ceremony, people have said a lot about it. I'm going to just say it was demonic. And if you know me, you would be laughing right now because there's an inside joke within my family that I think everything is demonic, but I do. Like I can see things for what it is and most of what we deal with is demonic. From what I understand, during the ceremony, they showed each a golden calf, a golden bull, or maybe it was a golden calf and a bull. First of all, a bull would represent the false god of Moloch from the Bible, which we know 
how horrific that was. And a golden calf. Let's read about in Exodus when the people were worshiping a golden calf. Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32 verses 1 through 9. And this is after God had saved his people from slavery in Egypt and Moses walked away from them to go get the Ten Commandments from God and this is what they did. Uh, Exodus 32, 1 through 9. When the people saw how long it was taking Moses to come back down the mountain, they gathered around Aaron. Come on, they said, make us some gods who can lead us. We don't know what happened to this fellow Moses who brought us here from the land of Egypt. So Aaron said, take the gold rings from the ears of your wives and sons and daughters and bring them to me. All the people took the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. Then Aaron took the gold, melted it down, and molded it into the shape of a calf. When the people saw it, they exclaimed, O Israel, these are the gods who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Aaron saw how excited the people were, so he built an altar in front of the calf. Then he announced, Tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord. The people got up early the next morning to sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings, which these are the offerings that should have been going for God himself. After this, they celebrated with feasting and drinking and indulged in pagan revelry. Remember those, feasting, drinking, and pagan revel revelry. The Lord told Moses, Quick, go down the mountain. Your people whom you brought from the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. How quickly they have turned away from the way I commanded them to live. They have melted down gold and made a calf, and they have bowed down and sacrificed to it. They are saying, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Then the Lord said, I have seen how stubborn and rebellious these people are. And let's go to verse 10. Now leave me alone so my fierce anger can blaze against them, and I will destroy them. Then I will make you, Moses, into a great nation. That's how furious God was with the situation, and Moses talked God into not being quite that furious with them, but that is how furious he was. Now, going along the lines of everything is demonic. I noticed several years ago, golden cows, calves, bulls, whatever, showing up into stores as knickknacks. Dollar Tree, other places, higher end ones, and people were snapping them up like crazy. Just grabbing them and having no clue, just completely not even knowing or if they knew then they were in defiance of God but whatever it was a thing and also Buddha started showing up in all these places and I would see people on YouTube with Buddha and they did not understand how dangerous something like that was they'd say something like isn't he cute no Buddha is not cute any idol any God that is not the one true God. It's not cute, adorable, whatever. It's just not. Okay. Then they said there was a Last Supper demonstration with drag queens and that one man was showing his privates. Then in the center of this Last Supper, there's a woman I guess, who is a lesbian, and she has a crown on representing Jesus. Now, we know what the Last Supper was. The Last Supper was Jesus with his disciples before he was crucified to pay the penalty for our sins. He sat there, he explained to them 
that the bread represented his body, that the wine represented his blood, and to do this in remembrance of him. So to do a display like that with drag queens, lesbians, so on, privates out, and need I say any more? But the director claims that we have all misunderstood this and this is not the Last Supper, he says. But it's actually a celebration of Dionysus and it is to show love and inclusion. And the lady in the middle who's to us representing Jesus is holding her hands and a heart. And so let's say for a second, okay, all right, we're going to go with it's not the Last Supper. It is a celebration of love and inclusion of the Dionysus. Let's take a look at what that would mean. Because neither one is good. Like if anybody's saying, oh, okay, I misunderstood. They haven't looked into it deep enough. Okay, Dionysus. I forgot to grab my phone with the complete description of him. But this is what he is. He is a Greek god that represents wine. He represents insanity. He represents sexual anything. This is a very demonic false god on display here. Um, He's the anything goes type God. It is evil, evil, evil. It is all evil. The history of the Olympics. Let's take a look at that. I think that adds a new layer to this. Um, the Olympics were originally part of a religious festival to honor Zeus the father of the Greek gods and goddesses. Emperor Theodosius banned the Olympics in 393 AD to promote Christianity. He deemed the games paganism. Remember when we read in 2 Timothy and uh, we got to the part about paganism? Okay, uh, Oh, it wasn't 2 Timothy. It was in Exodus 32, right here. Um, verse 6. The people got up early the next morning to sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings. After this, they celebrated with feasting and drinking, which this Dionysus is the god of wine, and uh, indulged in pagan revelry. All right, so... So the emperor deemed it paganism. So even if this was not a mocking of the Last Supper, it was at best the replacement of Jesus with Dionysus symbolizing ritual, madness, and ecstasy. There are the words. Ritual, madness, and ecstasy is what you find out. Wine and Ritual madness and ecstasy, those are what he was the god of. Uh, okay, ritual madness and ecstasy, LGBTQ. They even had a child on the stage with them during this display. Um, I think they might be stating that this god is the god of love, accepting the LGBTQ and bringing paganism back into the Olympics. To me, that is definitely at least part of what they are doing. Um, they are trying to say, forget Jesus, serve Dionysus, go back to paganism, because he is the god of love and accepting for the LGBTQ community, and it is evil upon evil, it is layers of evil. 
We know Sodom and Gomorrah in the Bible. We know that they were destroyed for this type of behavior. Let's read Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Do not practice homosexuality, having sex with another man as with a woman. It is a detestable sin. And then chapter 20, verse 13 in Leviticus. If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man as with a woman, both men have committed a detestable act. They must both be put to death for they are guilty of a capital offense. Right here, this is not acceptable behavior. Um, Romans chapter one. If you're watching this and you're a homosexual, surrender your life to Jesus and ask him to take that from you. We still love you. God still loves you, but the behavior is not pleasing to him and it is unacceptable. He can help with it, just like he can help with drinking, drugs, any other sins that people might have. He can even forgive murder, bring it to him, bring it to him and get right with him. Uh, if you haven't accepted Jesus as your savior, the information's in the description box. Accept, believe, confess. Uh, Romans chapter 1 verses 26 through 27. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual sexual relationships with women burned with lust for each other men did shameful things with other men and as a result of this sin they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved let's look at verse 32 they know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die Yet they do them anyways. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them. This display definitely encourages others to do this. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 9 through 10. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves, those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And let's go on to verse 11. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed, you were made holy, you were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. There it is, right there. We might have tendencies in that list, some of us not homosexuality, but like... Uh, greedy or some of those other ones but we are made right with Jesus and if we're walking with Jesus he is taking those things away from us um, let's go to Jude chapter 1 verse 7 Jude Chapter 1, verse 7. And don't forget Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring towns, which were filled with immorality and 
every kind of sexual perversion, those cities were destroyed by fire and serve as a warning of the eternal fire of God's judgment. Interesting. I understand that after this, Paris was hit with a power outage, like a blackout type thing, and it affected trains and stuff like that. Let's read Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Wow, what a powerful verse. Then there was this horse, and it was like this cloaked person, and you couldn't see the face. And some people said that this was the pale horse shown in this horrific display from Revelation 6, and there's four horses in Revelation 6. And if it was any of those horses, it definitely would have been the pale horse. Um, let's read Revelation 6. As I watched, the lamb broke the first of the seven seals of the scroll. Then I heard one of the four living beings say with a voice like thunder, Come. I looked up and saw a white horse standing there. Its rider carried a bow and a crown was placed on his head. He rode out to win many ba battles and gain the victory. When the lamb broke the second seal, I heard the second living being say, Come. Then another horse appeared, a red one. Its rider was given a mighty sword and the authority to take peace from the earth. And there was war and slaughter everywhere. When the lamb broke the third seal, I heard the living being say, Come. I looked up and saw a black horse, and its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice from among the four living beings say, a loaf of wheat bread or three loaves of barley will cost a day's pay, and don't waste the olive oil and wine. When the lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard the fourth living being say, Come. I looked up and saw a horse whose color was pale green. Its rider was named Death, and his companion was the grave. These two were given authority over one-fourth of the earth to kill with the sword and famine and disease and wild animals. Okay, there's the information on that. They claimed the horse was actually a symbol of a Greek goddess displaying resistance. And I say resistance to what? Jesus? Her name was Cavell de Zeus. Remember what we just read about Zeus and the Olympics and the head of the gods, the Greek gods and goddesses? Interesting. Again, pagan, evil, anti-Jesus, whether it's the pale horse or not, who knows, but what they claim it is, is disturbing enough. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. What sorrows for those who say that evil is good and good is evil, that dark is light and light is dark, that bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. Guys, we have reached that point. So many people in large amounts are at the point of saying that evil is good and good is evil. We have been talking, this will be the third week, about how bad our country needs revival. Let's take it a step further. Our world needs revival. This happened in Paris. And I watched some interviews after, you know, this guy, he just went out and he started interviewing people. What did you feel specifically about this part of this, the opening ceremony? And he asked him about these things. 
and what did the average person say on the street? It was wonderful. It was great. Or that was my favorite part. Really? Really, that was your favorite part. Guys, it makes my stomach roll that we have reached this place in the world. There are no words for it. None. They are trying to desensitize us to evil so that it appears normal, so that evil appears to be good. I'm going to start crying again, guys. I can't hold it together with these topics we have been doing lately. Oh my gosh, the world needs Jesus. They want it to appear normal and especially to brainwash our kids. That's why I think they had a kid on the stage to kind of get the focus of the kids. Guys, I hate to say this, but it's the same thing that Hitler did with the kids, you know, brainwashing them and stuff. Think about the stuff going on in our schools, the stuff little children are being taught. I'm going to end the video right here. Please leave me all kinds of comments on this because I couldn't go live and I want to know what all of you guys think. And please be praying for revival in our family, in our friends, in our towns, in our country, in our world. But in the end, we know what's going to happen if we've read Re Revelation. We know what's happening in the end. But we want the most people saved possible before God wins the victory. Let's close in prayer. Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much that you could take the blinders off of our eyes and show us what is really what, Lord. And even though I stumble through and have to wipe my nose and forget my phone with some extra information on it, Lord, I just thank you that you are able to use my humble presentation, although not perfect, Lord. And I just pray that each one of us this week would remember the real agenda of what's going on in this world and to rise up like never before and to just pray for these revivals, Lord, and to just be such a light to the world that others would look at us and be like, something is so different. I'm not being fooled by what I see. I need Jesus, Lord. Bless each one that's here. And you know the prayer list we have, Lord. It's enormous. And I just turn it over to you. You know each person's needs and wants, Lord. I just ask that you take care of all of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you hopefully next Thursday. Love you guys. Bye.